Good. Awesome. Hi, guys, and welcome again to our 2016 Oscar podcast for the young folks.com. Um, we've been going through a number of our categories so far, and now we're going to talk about best animated film. Um, this one's a little bit out of left field. I feel like, you know, it might be more obvious to do something like adapt a screenplay or something, but I always think the animated comedy, uh, the animated category is one of the most interesting, so I thought it'd be fun to bring it in. Um, this year, the nominations are Inside Out, Anomalisa, The Boy in the World, Shaun the Sheep Movie, and When Marnie Was There. Um, this, I guess this doesn't apply as much here, but disclaimer is that we're not here to talk or to contest what's been nominated. We're not here to talk about what should have been nominated because it's not going to change anything. It takes a lot of time to talk about that, and we don't have the energy. So, Ryan, what's your pick? My pick is when Marnie was there. Um, it's one of my favorite non Miyazaki um, Ghibli films. It's if this is the last Ghibli film, then they're going out on a really, really fantastic, touching, wonderfully animated movie. Um, I think it's a, a sight better than the director's last film, which I, I think was The Secret World of Ariadne. And um, it's a really well-paced, I, I think it's the best story of all of the animated films, as, as, as Ghibli films tend to be. And... I, I, I thought that, you know, the, the pacing and the story and everything like that was really, really tremendous. And I hope I, 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 I hope that it wins, but considering, you know, Pixar's role, I'm not sure it will. Yeah, if Princess if the Tale of Princess Kaiguya can't win against, you know, the picks last year and arguably is to me <laughs> It was my favorite film of last year, and I think it's one of the best films in the last decade. Uh, if that can't win, I can't see the you know surprise pick when Marnie was there winning either. But I do think it was tremendous. I think it was a great film, and I think it was very contemplative. And I think in a way, it's almost similar to Inside Out, because both are very keyed in on, on young girls' emotions and how important they are and how they should be celebrated and, and like, you know, looked at and not just dismissed, which I think a lot of movies do. Do you, do you mind, just because in this category, some people may not know what the movies are, are about, and despite the fact that I've seen Ghibli and Miyazaki films, I actually don't know what it is, but can you guys tell me what the story? Well, when Marty the... was there, it was a, it's essentially a young, shy girl is sent away during the summer to live with, I think, some family members. And it's all about her meeting this girl, Marnie, who I don't want to give any spoilers, but she's not everything that she appears to be. And it's just about, you know, the lead character kind of coming into her own and finding somebody who listens and cares. And it's just, it's a very introspective movie, I guess, on, again, a young girl and her own little coming-of-age story. Mm -hmm. Would you add anything? Sorry, I kind of cut you off. <laughs> uh, that, that was more or less what I was going to say. Um, and it's very... It, it it kind of feels like a like a picture postcard of a film. There there's another uh, Ghibli film. I think it's from Up on Poppy Hill. That's I I feel is it's kind of a companion film to from, from Up on Poppy Hill. And mm -hmm. um, I I feel that both of them kind of have this this feeling of of longing and memories and, and childhood that are. Uh, it, it's very interesting to see Ghibli go in this direction. Um. And, you know, like, like I said, I, I hope this isn't the last Ghibli film. It would be a tremendous loss if it was. But if, if they go out on this film, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's a tremendous yeah. movie. I think, I do think Kaiguya or The Wind Rises would have been a more perfect kind of encapsulation of what the studio does and what it means. But When Marty Was There is not a bad film. It is a very strong film and it's a beautiful film. Um, but I want to jump up a little bit to a vastly different film and talk about Evan's pick. My pick is a very, very strange one. And there was one actually for the site. I uh, went to a screening and a Q&A for, and the day after I actually met with the co-directors of this film and did an interview. So it's up on the website. Uh, it's a little film called Anomalisa. And it's co-directed by Charlie Kaufman, who is most famous for uh, writing very cerebral films, um, 
most commonly known is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and being John Malkovich. Um, the other director is Duke Johnson, who works for Starburns Industries, and people know them from uh, uh, Community, uh, the TV show Community, and his his most notable work is on the Abed's Christmas special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is the, it's an animated film. It's a stop-motion animated film, which is very quickly becoming a lost art. And with Anomalisa, it's a very... I don't... Mm, not the time to say that, but Lakia does all stop motion, and they've done the box trolls, Coraline. But I'm saying it's a, it's a very it's it's it's, <laughs> it's not as common as it once was, and the, okay. usually every year there's one there's one really solid one. Because the, the Oscars love stop motion, and, and, especially if it's Nick Park, yeah. But what's so unique about Anomalisa is the way that the the way they designed its style in set design, lighting. And the puppets, which they all created in 3D printing, it, Sorry has, about this. it has a photorealistic look to it. And it, for, for some, it may be unsettling and jarring to look at at mm -hmm. first. Uh, but as you, as you watch the film, it, you begin to kind of forget, until it becomes a key component in the plot, how it, it, it looks so real and in a way these characters and the way that they're emoted through the voice acting and the animation style it's probably most visibly captured humanity in a way that a film has really connected with no, in yeah. a very it's very been, long time it's one of the most human movies and it's done with puppets this year i yeah i, I and that shows you the strength of the writing um mm -hmm. the strength that, yeah ab absolutely like the, the first the opening act of the film uh, feels like it, 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 it beat for beat carries the main character Michael uh, through an entire evening of traveling to, to Cincinnati and um, it be, beat for beat in the first act it's the exact happenings of a generic travel scenario like all the weird little strange idiosyncrasies and the ticks and moments like yeah. sitting in the cab uh checking in at the hotel the bellboy uh, the phone calls it's it you know, it it sounds cliche to say but and it's been said in reviews but it is insanely human in a very strange and familiar way yeah it's a movie made out of a lot of highs for me i don't know if it would be my pick but the highs are just that they're amazing but it kind of eclipses the smaller moments that weren't as good like i feel like there's a lot of waiting for great moments in the film rather than them all being great um but i'm gonna switch now i think to the pixar movie my pick <laughs> and i usually here's the thing is i don't like the idea that the oscars default pick for these films are either disney or pixar you know more, you sometimes mutually the same thing but mm -hmm. This time, I think it's earned, and for a number of reasons. I do, being me, I do love that it is so focused on a little girl's emotions and how to not minimalize the feelings that she has and the anger and the sadness, and I think the highlighting it is so important and the fact that being happy all the time isn't necessarily great and try and forcing yourself to be happy all the time when you're not and not expressing yourself can be damaging to not just young people, but in this case, you know, a young girl psyche. And I think the movie is just so smart. I think, you know, all the jokes about the different layers of emotions and how they're not just categorized in these four, you know, uh, sadness, fear, anger, and joy, and how as you get older, they develop into more nuanced emotions. And I just think that in the vibrancy of the animation to Amy Poehler is just, I mean, Damn near perfect casting. As perfect casting as you can get. Perfect um, casting Amy Poehler as a character named Joy is hitting the nail on the head. And yeah, I just yeah. I think there's so much to love about it. I loved um I can't pronounce his last name, Michael Giochino or something, his score. He did Star Trek too. Mm -hmm. And it's just it like I listened to it and it's just perfect and it transplants you back to it. So you know, it's an experience movie. You go and you watch it, you get completely sucked in. Bing bong happens and you die a little. And it's just an amazing film. And Maybe I just, that's why it didn't connect with me as strongly. Because I saw it in a theater, literally, and I was the only person in the theater. Okay, yeah. I went to a screening <laughs> of it that was kind of packed. And, you know, I, I mean, I do think these are the type of movies that should be seen in theaters. And I think it creates an overall experience. But, yeah, this year I love... 
I'm the only movie I haven't seen yet is the boy in the world. I should be seeing it soon, but this year I do think the animated films are once again, one of the strongest representations of what the industry can do and what they yeah. are capable of. Um, um, and I, I really liked inside out as well. It was, it's probably one of my top five favorite Pixar movies. Yeah. It's probably like, yeah, it's in my top. I probably it'd probably be that and Finding Nemo are my favorites. Really? Yeah. I, I guess I need to watch it again. Yeah, I yeah. just I think it I think it really is a lot more intricate than people maybe give it credit yeah. for. Obviously, not everybody. I think a lot of people put it on their top ten list, but casual I guess, viewers. I um, I so. thought the voice acting was pretty good. Yeah, no, I thought I think it was all very good, but yeah, I one, think animated's good this year. Yeah, one thing I can commend Inside Out for is that it's already at a point where people like like schools and universities and preschools and stuff like they're showing off they're showing the film as a way to help children understand the the way that the human mind is supposed to work and how to handle emotions and yeah. what to do in those scenarios. And I, the fact that it's already having that impact in the way that they engineer yeah. it. When I came out of that movie, I'm like, oh yeah, it's the most like overwritten Pixar movie I've seen. But as time goes on, I realize that there's a purpose for that. Yeah. And I think that the purpose in time is 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 showing the real reason for it. No, so sure. I got I got to give it another watch. It was yeah. it was a good movie. It just didn't connect with me because I was literally the only person watching it in the theater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With like a nephew, or I'm not a nephew, but you know what I mean, like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> if I watch it, if I watch it with my little sister, I feel like it'd be fun because she, you know her excitement feeds onto it. But um, yeah, I think that's about it for the anime. An uh, what was that word? The animated category. <laughs> that was a Japanese word. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. Uh -oh. Botched every word I said. If you'd like to share your opinions with us or join us on the night of the Oscars, which is, what is the date? I can't remember. February 28th. February 28th is a Sunday. Um, it's always a Sunday. Join us with our Twitter handle at TYF official. And I run it. TYF Oscars. Uh, and we will be commenting on the show the entire time. <laughs>